Hey guys, it's Lindsay with High Altitude Astrology and I'm bringing you another chart reading. Today I am focusing on the chart of Charlie Rose and he was born on January 5th, 1942 at 5.50 p.m. in Henderson, North Carolina. Now, I've been doing a series of chart readings on people who have been in the public eye and receiving attention lately because of um, sexual assault uh, charges or sex sexual assault, um, uh, yeah, I guess charges. I mean, not necessarily criminal charges, but people bringing it out that these things have been occurring. And... Um, Charlie Rose happens to be one of them and one of the very interesting things I wanted to share right off the bat that I have found between the charts of Harvey Weinstein, Kevin Spacey, and Charlie Rose is that they all have Mars-Pluto connections in their charts in challenging angles. So with Kevin Spacey, he has Mars conjunct Pluto in Virgo, I believe. And in Harvey Weinstein's chart, he has Mars squared Pluto, and it's the same in Charlie Rose's chart. He has uh, Mars at 27 degrees Aries squared Pluto out of sign at five degrees Leo, but it is still a square with about eight degrees of separation. And I just find it interesting to, to basically see that pattern because as I've discussed in some of the other uh, videos that I've done about those other two people, what this Mars-Pluto energy creates are these power dynamics in uh, relationships, uh, especially around sexuality and around control because Mars, of course, is the male uh, principle for sexuality. And Pluto, although it can be at its most elevated expression, the experience of transforming oneself through a process of essentially letting go, a process of becoming aware of our unconscious drives in order to, to release ourselves from them. But if we're not really able to consciously work our Pluto energy and whatever it's related to, it often starts with these um, very obsessive, compulsive, controlling kind of behaviors related to whatever planet Pluto's touching. So in this case of these three men, it has to do with the male sexual energy because their Pluto is in a challenging dynamic to Mars in all of their charts. So just a little piece of trivia I find interesting that connects all three charts together. But going back to the chart of Charlie Rose, let's just look at his natal chart to start with. He has his son in Capricorn and it's at 14 degrees and his son trines Saturn in Taurus and his Saturn's at 21 degrees. So that's a uh, wide trine of about seven degrees. But still, Sun in Capricorn trines Saturn. Saturn rules Capricorn. This makes him a very hard worker. You know, he's had a very long and successful career. And that Saturn in Taurus at 21 degrees also conjuncts Uranus at 26 degrees. So uh, that brings in this element of not only him being somebody who is a lot about his work because his son trines Saturn, but that Uranus gives him sort of an unusual bent to his work and kind of a humanitarian perspective to a certain extent as well because Uranus rules Aquarius, the sign of humanity. So something about his work, Saturn, brings in this element of humanity. And I think we can certainly see that in the kind of uh, investigative journalism that he's done, you know, bringing uh, light and awareness to issues that affect, you know, all of humanity. So Sun trine Saturn, Sun trine Uranus, which also Sun trine Uranus just makes him kind of a unique uh, individual, you know, somebody who who can kind of see dimensional perspective, somebody who has, who, who kind of uh, puts himself out there. His purpose, again, 
somehow is connected to, to Uranian themes like uh, humanity. And then his son also is widely conjunct Mercury. So this, uh, it's a nine degree conjunction, but this makes him a communicator. This gives him that investigative journalism uh, person to have his sort of pulse on news, pulse on you know, the constant kind of changes that are happening and being able to tap into them and, and then communicate about them. So we can see kind of his career sort of clearly defined in the aspects to his son. Then he's got the moon at 22 degrees Leo. And this is interesting. Uh, of course, Leo moons, you know, this probably gives him the ability to uh, be somewhat like an actor as a news uh, broadcaster. You know, you have to have that desire to really want to be seen uh, in that profession. And this Leo moon probably gives him some of that, uh, that quality where, you know, Leo energy likes to be recognized, likes to be seen. Uh, and, and, and he needs that. If the moon is our needs, you know, he needs that in order to feel secure. He needs that in order to feel comfortable. So, you know, they'll, Leo moons will seek in some ways sort of the attention of the limelight. Uh, so that seems fitting for what he's uh, done for himself with his career. Now, the moon does trine his Mars at 21 degrees Aries. It's an eight degree uh, trine, eight degree orb trine. But that gives him that fiery feistiness. I, I believe in some of his interviewing, he can kind of be sort of like um, to the point, you know, and try to get at, uh, he's not, he's kind of fearless in, in asking some of those tough questions, you know, and that would be that, that moon trying Mars in Aries, you know, giving him really some courage in uh, the way that he also responds emotionally to the people that he's interviewing, you know, not backing down, not being afraid to really kind of go in there and go after uh, those, those questions that are, that are poignant and revealing. Well, his moon is actually connected to a T-square in his chart. So he's got the moon in Leo opposite Venus in Aquarius. So let's, this is the first part of the T-square, the opposition. So let's just think about that. Moon in Leo, he needs to be seen in order to feel comfortable, to feel secure. But then Venus in Aquarius, which is opposite his moon, Venus in Aquarius, your loving energy, kind of in a very um, unusual sign in the sense that you don't necessarily need to be adored or uh, recognized. And in fact, what makes you feel uh, good is to sort of like be seen as an individual. You know, you like to be uh, recognized as an individual in the sense that uh, not like individual as in you stand out, but that like we all are individuals and every person should be recognized for being an individual. We all have something to contribute. So. It also just might be kind of unusual relationships. You know, Venus in Aquarius may not be the traditional type where you are going to get married in your early 20s and have this many kids and blah, blah, blah. You know, it's, it, it, it's not like that. Venus want, in Aquarius wants like um, something more interesting, something unusual, something, you know, kind of uh, dynamic and, and sort of just not the status quo, not, the same thing all the time you know it, it wants um, innovation in relationship you know it just wants something different so there's the opposition his his needs to be seen with that Leo moon but then the Venus is kind of like but I want freedom you know I, I, I don't want to be attached then what happens is that both the moon and Venus square his Saturn and Uranus conjunction in Taurus so let's break that down. Moon squared Saturn. That can just mean sometimes it's difficult to express our emotional self because moon is our feelings, but Saturn has a restrictive quality, it can have a coldness, you know, it can have a seriousness to it. So at times the moon squared Saturn might just, you know, not have uh, confidence in its ability to really express its feelings very well. Um, and then to have it 
that Saturn sitting next to Uranus, it's like, well, the moon Uranus kind of also, again, like wants freedom, you know, it's, it's, it wants, um, freedom of emotional expression. You know, it doesn't really want attachment. It doesn't want, um, what it wants is to feel free. You know, that's what makes it feel comfortable and secure. But again, there's this weird dynamic because it's like Leo Moon, you do want to be recognized and you do want to be seen, but it's squaring Uranus, which is about freedom. So there's something there that uh, kind of is a challenge in integrating, you know, how to have both of those experiences, you know, in your life. And then the last part then would be the Venus squaring the Saturn and Uranus. And again, Saturn has the same effect on Venus in the sense that sometimes, you know, Venus being our self-worth, our, our, um, our kind of loving, creative expression, squared by Saturn can just mean sometimes maybe we don't feel our self-worth um, enough. Or it can mean, it can just, you have to work hard to really feel good about yourself, you know, and, and, and the way you end up feeling good about yourself is, is the things that you produce, the things that, you know, you really create through your work. Um, it could, it just kind of feels like this. And then with the Venus square Uranus, let me just get to that last part. Um, you know, that's like wanting a lot of change in relationship because Venus is our, our relationship energy. So that's wanting like a lot of change and a lot of, you know, not, feeling very comfortable, like just being necessarily with one person for the rest of your life, you know? So this is an interesting T-square dynamic with the moon opposing Venus and then squaring both Saturn and Uranus. Um, because if you think about Saturn and Uranus too, it's like Saturn is tradition and Uranus is like absolutely no tradition. You know, and so both of those two planets are squaring not only the loving energy, the Venus, but also squaring the emotions and the expression of feeling. So you can just kind of get a sense that there's just this challenge, you know, a little bit of a challenge when it comes to those deeper aspects of the self. So the also, uh, he's got Mars at 27 degrees Aries. Chart. And I'm just going to go ahead and jump to his transits. Because so Uranus is currently at around 25 degrees Aries and it's retrograding. What has been happening is that Mars has been, excuse me, what has been happening is that Uranus has been going back and forth across his Mars. And again, that Mars squares his Pluto natally. So Uranus, the planet of change, the planet of sudden upsets, the planet of, you know, lightning, like, like electric, like knowledge that comes kind of out of nowhere in the sense that it kind of wakes you up and it, it re makes you recognize a larger perspective. Because remember, Uranus rules uh, Aquarius and Aquarius is about humanity. So what's happening right now is something is shifting in him with this Uranus having gone back and forth and back and forth across his Mars. So again, this started in May of this year, 2017, and it's going to end in March of 2018. So something is being awakened in him in relation to his male energy, his Mars in Aries. Mars in Aries. Mars is in its home in Aries. Mars in Aries is confident, it's the warrior, it's that male, maleness at its like raw form, but it squares Pluto in his natal chart. So it's tied up with something related to power and control, you know, and we don't know his history, we don't know where what he experienced as a younger person, but sometimes Pluto has to do with these undercurrents that we were exposed to as a younger person and it's influenced us and you know it keeps it keeps like compelling us until we finally address it you know so I'm just saying this is the time because Uranus is going wake up uh, wake up no longer can you operate in this way everything's getting exposed, you know, 
Um, and it's time for you to incorporate a larger understanding around this energy within you and to recognize how it affects humanity and to really, um, you know, work it differently now, you know, to, to look at yourself, Pluto, and allow, you know, yourself to explore your unconscious, why you do this, why you behave in this way and get a higher understanding of it. That's Uranus. Get a broader picture of it and, and recognize that obviously things need to change and you need to see that it's important that you act in a way that is that helps humanity, that does not break humanity down and tear it down. So that's the main transit that's bringing up this uh, situation for him right now. He's also had Pluto in his sun sign, because remember he is a uh, sun in Capricorn at 14 degrees. Pluto has passed the conjunction to his sun, uh, but it has been in his sun sign. So when Pluto moves into your sun sign, you're going to feel this, this like energy that is drawing you to look more deeply into, into yourself. And in this case, it would be into how he shines out into the world because his purpose, because that's his, what the solar energy is symbolic of. Uh, he's also had um, transiting Neptune squaring his Jupiter. And if we remember, let's just look at his Jupiter again. It's trying his Venus. And it's actually sextile his Chiron. I didn't mention that before. But Neptune in Pisces has been squaring his Jupiter in uh, Aries, uh, excuse me, in Gemini. That could just be bringing up a little bit of like, you know, Neptune creates uh, in squares especially, like it can create confusion, it can create a fog, it can create illusion, you know, and, and so right now with the Neptune squaring the Jupiter by transit, it could just be bringing up, especially around any philosophies, Jupiter in Gemini, that he's had, again, as it trines his Venus in relation to his relationships, Neptune could just be saying, okay, you know, there's this, there's this confusion here that needs to be recognized and we need to start looking at things more realistically. Um, also, he has had uh, Jupiter opposite his Mars since uh, in late September. And again, the Mars is part of that square to Pluto. So Jupiter could have just been creating an expansion of this energy. Uh, Jupiter in Libra could just be sort of stimulating that Mars, but then also stimulating the square to the Pluto. So it could have just been the process of bringing this all more to the surface. And just a couple of other things. His progressed sun has moved into Aries. Um, you know, progressed sun moving into a new sign is always somewhat significant. It can just mean, I would say maybe this is a time where he can really begin, begin to express his solar energy in a new way. You know, Aries is the very beginning sign of the zodiac. It's, it's, it's symbolic of springtime. It's, it's the new, you know? So perhaps this is, you know, a time for him to really take on a new uh, persona, a new way of, a new purpose, a new way of bringing himself out into the world. Life. Uh, then he's also had two solar arc patterns happening. So the solar arc Venus at six degrees Taurus has been squaring his natal Pluto. And again, the Pluto is connected to the, the square to Mars, which has been being transited by Uranus. But I just see this as another symbol of the same pattern, solar arc Venus in Taurus. Taurus wants to hold on, you know, Taurus wants to, it's a fixed energy and Solar arc Venus in Taurus is like, well, Venus rules Taurus. So it's, it's very comfortable there, but it really wants what it wants, but it's been squaring the Pluto. It's been squaring that Pluto in Leo and kind of perhaps suggesting that there's a need to transform the self in relationship to those attachments to what it is we want and desire through that Venusian principle. 
And finally, solar arc Pluto has been trining his Venus. So this just suggests that there's an opportunity here to really do that internal work if, if he chooses to really look at those unconscious aspects of himself and to transform you know, those unconscious aspects of himself uh, into you know a new expression of his loving energy of his venus energy in a really true way that appreciates and acknowledges um humanity because that's again his venus is in aquarius so he has an opportunity here to really on an internal level kind of transform you know this shadow part of him and and allow himself to really recognize that the best way to relate to people is you know by by honoring and acknowledging uh and loving their individuality you know and 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 honoring that and not um not taking advantage of that so this has been the chart of charlie rose and thank you so much for listening if you do like my channel please subscribe also, you can reach me for readings at lindsayc73 at gmail.com. Thanks again, and see you on the next video. Adios.